So far in the policy analysis process, you've defined a problem and success, proposed a few policy alternatives to help achieve success, and defined and operationalized evaluative criteria. Now you get to start putting all of those definitions to work. Planning your analysis is the step where you determine exactly how you'll be conducting the analysis and choosing between your policy alternatives. This is what makes your analysis systematic and rigorous. You should be able to see now how the things that you've learned in MPA 504 have prepared you for this methodology. In this step, you'll be describing the sources of information and data you'll be looking for and how you'll be applying them. This is the part you would describe to a policymaker who asked you how you arrived at your conclusions. As with most steps in this course, this is an oversimplified version of this step. I'll explain how a little bit later. For now, keep in mind that there are specific types of policy analysis where some of these items are already decided, like cost-benefit analysis or risk assessment. Essentially, what you're learning and doing here is an ingredient in all of them. On your worksheet, you have a few sub-questions that seem confusing on their face. First, what are you looking at and what are you looking for? What are you looking at? This is a simple statement that you're comparing three policy alternatives against each other. Remember, two options and the null, along the three criteria that you've chosen. What are you looking for? You're trying to identify how each alternative performs according to those established criteria. To explain this, I am going to oversimplify it. For each of the criteria that you've identified, you need to tell your audience what's good and what's bad before doing the analysis. That means for you to recommend a policy, what is the target or desired condition for each criterion? For our purposes, I'm only going to ask you to identify a positive, neutral, and negative condition for each. Just like there are rubrics on assignments that tell you what you have to do to achieve an unsatisfactory, satisfactory, proficient, and advanced score in each grading criterion, you need to define what a policy has to do to achieve a negative, neutral, or positive outcome for each evaluative criterion. In real life, you'll really set much more specific targets and levels of performance. Consider this example. Imagine we've identified a policy goal of reducing the amount of litter on Market Street in downtown Wilmington. Downtown Visions is a company that, among other things, picks up litter off the street and sidewalk constantly. Their workers bring what they collect to their central shed and weigh it. If my criterion is effectiveness, and remember effectiveness is the measure of whether the policy has the impact or does the thing that we want, here we want to develop policies that result in less littering, thus less litter for downtown Visions to pick up. In this case, I'm looking for policies that have the impact of reducing the daily recorded weight of litter collected. I'm going to define positive, neutral, and negative potential outcomes or conditions ahead of time. To say a policy is positive in terms of effectiveness, it would have to result in a net decrease in the average daily recorded weight of litter picked up on Market Street. To say it is neutral in terms of effectiveness, it would have to result in no change in the average daily recorded weight of litter. And to say it is negative, the policy alternative would have to result in a net increase in the average daily recorded weight of litter picked up. Next, you're asked to describe how you'll be projecting each policy's performance on each criterion. You can't just guess or give the answer you want to see. You need to identify some way of projecting that others can reasonably accept and trust. To do this, you could look at the results reported in other places that have used the policy, and this is a good technique. Pointing to a policy's performance by the criteria you've established is a good way of suggesting the policy could perform similarly in your context. But remember, context is important, so match like with like. In MPA 601, we talk at length about the role of context in the work we do. It also has a role in policy analysis. As an example, a policy that has demonstrable success providing after-school activities to kids in urban Philadelphia probably won't work quite as well in rural West Virginia. Differences in population density, geography, and walkability mean kids in the rural setting would have the added barrier of transportation to and from activities. You can also lay out a logical argument that a policy can be expected to perform a certain way on each criterion. If you are going to do this, you need to be very careful to construct a watertight, logical case for the projection you'll be offering. In my example from the last slide, I'm planning on looking at a similar program in downtown St. Louis and projecting effectiveness based on what was reported there. It can be difficult to keep all of this straight, so you can help yourself visualize what you're doing by using an analysis matrix. For this step, we're just going to be setting it up. In the basic matrix, you can see we put our policy alternatives across the top and criteria down the left side. Each box then accounts for each policy's projected outcome in each criterion. 
For my example, I'm completing the setup by placing each of my policy alternatives across the top and criteria along the left side. I'm imagining two policy alternatives as well as the null, and I simply fill in the header boxes for now. Since you've already explained each policy in worksheet one, you can just use a simple statement or policy title for the matrix. Policy alternative one is to install an additional trash can per block. Alternative two is to increase the enforcement of littering fines, and the null is no policy change. Criterion one is effectiveness, which in my case is the projected daily average reduction of litter. I've also chosen cost, here one-time cost of implementation and ongoing cost of maintenance, and political feasibility, here the likelihood that city council will approve of the policy as my other two criteria. This is as far as you'll go in worksheet two. You aren't going to fill in the middle boxes until the next worksheet when you actually make your projections. Submit your analysis matrix with your worksheet, but also save a copy so you can finish filling it in for worksheet three. At this stage, you've done two of the three worksheets and you haven't even gotten to do the analysis yet. Most of the work really is in the setup. Making sure you plan your analysis well is the best way of ensuring and demonstrating to others that your methodology was sound and your policy recommendations can be trusted.